The NBA is on the brink of a seismic shift. Teams with generational talents, rising stars, and bold visions for the future are positioning themselves to take control of the upcoming era. It's a battle of ambition, strategy, and timing, because in this league, greatness isn't given, it's earned. The question is, which of these teams has what it takes to build the next golden era and carve their names into the history books? Let's dive into the contenders for tomorrow's dominance. The first team on the list is the San Antonio Spurs. The Spurs are in an interesting position right now. On one hand, they're one of the worst teams in the league, a rebuilding squad that's taking L's on a nightly basis. On the other hand, they might just have the brightest future of any team in the NBA. And that reason is simple, Victor Wembanyama. The Spurs landed a player whose potential is so immense that even their current struggles seem insignificant in the grand scheme of things. Let's not overthink this. Wembenyama is a once in a generation talent. At 7'4 with guard like agility, a silky jump shot, and the ability to dominate defensively, he's the kind of player we've never really seen before. There have been moments where he's unguardable, and it's clear that once he puts it all together, he's going to be an unstoppable force. The Spurs knew exactly what they were getting when they selected him, and they're wisely taking the long view. Now, here's the thing about Wembenyama. As incredible as he is, even generational talents need help to reach their pinnacle. The Spurs are going to have to build the right team around him, but the blueprint isn't all that complicated. Get him a high-level point guard who can set the table, surround him with shooters to space the floor, and let him work his magic. Think about what Giannis Antetokounmpo has done in Milwaukee or what Nikola Jokic has done in Denver. Both had cohesive rosters during championship runs which maximized their unique abilities. That's all Wembenyama needs, and the scary part is he might already be good enough to elevate a solid supporting cast to contender status by his mid-20s. San Antonio's front office has had a track record of success when it comes to building around stars. They've done it with Tim Duncan, David Robinson, and even Kawhi Leonard. They know how to develop talent, find diamonds in the rough, and how to create a winning culture. The challenge is now to be patient while also making sure Wembenyama has the tools to succeed. They can't rush this process, but they also can't let him spend too many years toiling on a bad team without a clear direction. If everything pans out, and that's admittedly a big if with any rebuilding project, Wembenyama has the potential to lead the Spurs back to sustained championship glory. The next team on the list is the Boston Celtics. The Celtics are riding high right now, sitting firmly at the top of the NBA. Fresh off their championship run last season, the team looks poised to defend their crown and potentially go back to back. But let's not get too comfortable. This current iteration of the Celtics wasn't built to last forever. In fact, the clock might be ticking faster than anyone in Boston would like to admit. The Celtics have invested heavily in their stars, rightfully so, but keeping the rest of this championship caliber roster intact is going to get exponentially harder due to recent changes in the CBA. And it's not just the salary cap. A lot of the core players that make this team so special, like Al Horford and Derek White, they really aren't getting any younger. At some point, those key contributors will start to decline and the Celtics will have to retool. But here's the silver lining. Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are still incredibly young. Tatum at 26 is entering his prime, and Brown at 28 isn't really that far behind. These two have already proven that they can lead a team to a championship, and with the right moves, they could do it again. The Celtics may face a few lean years as they navigate the eventual decline of this roster, but Tatum and Brown give them a foundation that most teams can really only dream of. This isn't a situation where the window slams shut completely, instead it's more like a temporary reset. A brief pause before the Celtics are back to competing for titles. The key for Boston will be striking the perfect balance between staying competitive in the short term and planning for the long term. They'll need to find ways to replenish the supporting cast, whether through savvy trades, draft picks, or bargain free agent signings. And let's be real, this is the Celtics we're talking about. This franchise has a history of staying relevant, and with Brad Stevens running the show, there's no reason to think they can't manage this transition. So yes, the current version of the Celtics might have an expiration date, but this isn't the end of the story. With Tatum and Brown leading the way, Boston's championship aspirations aren't going anywhere. They're built for the now, but they're also positioned to rise again when the time comes. For Celtics fans, the message is simple. Enjoy the ride, but don't worry too much about what's next. With this duo in place, the future is just as bright as the present. 
Out of all 30 NBA teams, there may be none in a better position to spark up a dynasty than the OKC Thunder. The Thunder last year made a massive push, going from the ninth seed the season prior to finishing as the first seed in the extremely deep west. But unlike other top NBA teams, the Thunder still have the benefit of youth. Comparing them to the Celtics, Nuggets, and T-Wolves who all have an average age of between 26 to 28, the Thunder have an average age of just 24 years old, so you can guarantee that if they stay together, this team isn't going anywhere anytime soon. Sam Presti and the rest of the front office have done an amazing job throughout the draft while bringing in winning players to this organization. Between both Jalen Williams's Chet and Lou Dort, you're hard pressed to find a franchise that's had better luck in the draft. Then you gotta look at the trade moves they've been able to pull off. The finesse of the century bringing in SGA and a bunch of first round picks to start off this team, and now bringing in both Isaiah Hartenstein and Alex Caruso to bolster the team's lineups. Comparing that to another organization who were trying to start up a dynasty conversation for themselves, the Denver Nuggets, this year they have struck when the iron is hot and brought in extra talent knowing that they were on the verge of something special. And aside from the team establishing the on-court chemistry, it also seems like there is a real bond off the court. You can see that cohesion even in a dude like Josh Giddy, who looked like he was going to try and smuggle himself back to OKC when the team came to Chicago. So with a bond like that, it's really on the front office. Not not to break them up, because these dudes are fully bought into the franchise and the rest of the team around them, so the likelihood of someone wanting to ask out is pretty slim. The team is also in a rare position where they are good and also have a massive stash of first round picks, and picks that could end up being lottery picks. The one that is coming due this offseason comes courtesy of the Clippers. And although the Clippers have had a pretty good start, that's a bit of a mirage. See, when you really look at it, a lot of their wins have come against the weaker Eastern Conference teams. In fact, in the Western Conference, they're only 7-7. Seven and seven. So as of right now, their record might be slightly inflated, and as we get deeper into the season, we could start to see them fall down in the standings, which would be a massive blessing to OKC if they completely tanked, seeing as this pick coming due is unprotected meaning the Thunder could very well win the championship this year and still be in a position to take Cooper Flagg or Ace Bailey with the first pick in the draft. Well, the blueprint for the Thunder having long-term success is there. The GM putting together a winning team, a solid top-level young coach, a group of guys that are fully bought in, and draft picks to keep developing more pieces that will become plug-and-play to your system. Saying that the Thunder have the brightest future of all NBA teams is not a stretch. Now moving on to the Orlando Magic who were also going through a rebuild around the same time as the Thunder. Although not nearly in the same position going forward as the Thunder, the Magic have also had amazing success through the draft. Dudes like Cole Anthony, Jalen Suggs, and most importantly, Paolo Bancaro. The start of Paolo's career has been nothing short of amazing. Coming in to drop a stat line we haven't seen in a rookie debut since LeBron James. Going on to continue that excellence as he became the first rookie since 1968 to start their rookie campaign with 5 straight 20 point games. And that greatness has only continued, carrying his Orlando Magic to the playoffs in just his second season. Now to come back this year and become one of the youngest players in league history to have a 50 point game. Unfortunately, only one game later he would be diagnosed with a torn oblique and set to be sidelined for quite a few weeks. This is a big blow to not only the franchise, but basketball fans around the world, who were finally starting to pay more attention to the great things Paolo was doing in Orlando. Nevertheless, even if this season doesn't go the way the franchise was hoping, looking forward to the future, they should not be concerned whatsoever. Paolo looks like a legitimate star in this league, possibly even a future MVP player. And alongside him, you have Jalen Suggs, who really started to emerge as a major piece for this Magic team. His three-point shooting is kind of becoming elite. His defense is really good and all around he's just one of those hustle type players. And looking into the future, he kind of is the perfect pairing beside Paolo. The only real knock against this team is that they don't have a reliable second option. Magic does have a deep bench and a ton of really good role players, but if they want success moving into the postseason, they desperately need to get that second scoring threat. Ideally, it would be nice if Franz was able to move into that position, but if his three ball looks the same as it did last year, it'll be tough for him to become as impactful as he was looking in the first two seasons of his career. Either way, this team is finally starting to bring in the right pieces to have a long-term push into the future. 
In the ever-growing NBA, it's getting extremely difficult to maintain dominance. As of late, we've seen it in teams like the Nuggets, Bucks, and the Warriors. The sheer volume of talent that's coming into the league is one of the main reasons that it is becoming tougher for teams to continue their dominance much longer than a two-season span. But for these specific teams, they're in a better position than most to make a true and real dynasty push. And that's it for the video. If you think there's a team that we missed, feel free to let us know in the comments, but if you did enjoy the video, feel free to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next week.